Starlink has released an in-motion dish and possible data caps, a recall on RV stovetops, 2024 Chevy and GMC trucks, and some gloom and doom over diesel availability. It's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. I'm Jason Epperson, coming to you from City of Rocks State Park in beautiful New Mexico, and we've got a lot to get to today, so let's jump right in. Over the last couple of years, we've reported on several pending diesel shortages. They're all part of the same problem that's been slowly growing, but some, let's say exaggerated reporting, hasn't told the full story and has had people panicking. But then when diesel didn't run out, they were left under concerned for the future. The U.S. Energy Information Administration has reported that the current total supply of diesel in the USA is down to about 25 days worth, which is the lowest level since 2008. However, this does not mean that America will run out of diesel within 25 days, like some people and even some major media outlets have suggested. What it does mean is that if refineries stop producing diesel right now, we would only have a fuel supply for another 25 days. Of course, thankfully, there are no plans to halt production anytime soon. However, the small buffer is becoming a big problem. Suppliers have little wiggle room on shipments, which could lead to temporary outages at individual stations in the short term. The Colonial Pipeline has been fully booked in order to move fuel quickly in the southeast, where the biggest concern is right now, but that's going to take a couple weeks. The remedy for shortages is, unfortunately, higher prices. We are already seeing diesel prices go up again, where the national average for a gallon of gasoline has held firm at about $3.76 over the past month. Diesel has jumped 42 cents to 5.30 a gallon. So why are we in this mess? Well, it started way back at the beginning of the pandemic. Several refineries went out of business during the huge drop in fuel demand over those first few months. Others artificially kept production low in order to keep prices high throughout much of COVID. There have been some emergency closures and there has been a reduction in refinery investment due in part to the nation's move towards electric vehicles. That's not a political statement, it's just a fact. The oil companies are not being forced to produce less fuel, and they have access to as much drilling and oil as ever, but they are less interested in the investment. Compounding the problem is the fact that the diesel shortage is worldwide, partially due to embargoes on Russia, which is actually causing an increase in fuel exports from the U.S. The government could impose restrictions on exports, but that would be disastrous for Europe. So, what's next? Market forces will do their thing, and it may be even more painful. If the diesel supply cannot grow quickly, increasing prices will feed more into inflation. Diesel prices affect nearly every consumer good we buy. But the real concern is a natural disaster. Imagine if Hurricane Ian had hit the Gulf Coast refineries. We would have been in utter chaos right now. There's little we can do in the immediate future besides letting high prices reduce demand. Unfortunately, this looks to be an expensive winter for diesel vehicle owners, truckers, and for anyone who heats their home with distillate fuel. Next up, several updates on Starlink satellite internet. Starlink has finally launched their made-for-mobile dish that can attach to the roof of an RV flat and can be used in motion. It's the same monthly price as the current RV service, and it's a much better antenna with a wider view of the sky, so it doesn't need motors to move it around. There's a big catch, though. It's over $2,500 to get the dish. You also have to have it installed by a dealer, and it uses more power than the standard dish. Call me underwhelmed. It also still is AC powered, which is an ideal for mobile use. Right now, your best option, if you can get it, is still the residential dish with portability enabled. It's prioritized above RV service, so in places, it's still going to be better than this new high-performance dish. But there's a waiting list to get it. You can change your address as you travel, but you also might lose your spot in your home location if you aren't full-timers like us. It also appears that Starlink has quietly introduced limits on how much data users can consume, likely an effort to reduce the amount of congestion it's currently experiencing. According to the new text, in the terms of service, residential Starlink users will receive a monthly allocation of priority access with fast internet speeds, but once they exceed the limit, speeds could be reduced. What that limit is, is anyone's guess. It sounds like data-hungry users will be put into the same deprioritized pool as the Starlink RV service users. 
Overall, Starlink is getting slower. Independent internet speed tester Ookla has found out that Starlink speeds have decreased in every country they surveyed over the past year as more users sign up for the service. There's a lot of concern over the slowing speeds and speed limits, but I actually think it's a good thing. They're weeding out the folks that are using gobs of data to download libraries of 4K movies and the like, while providing a better service to the low-end users. The deprioritized Starlink for RV service is supposed to have expected speeds of 5 megabits per second in the worst situations, which should still be enough to use the internet and even stream video in a reasonable fashion. For a time, we were seeing far worse speeds than that, less than one megabit per second. And we heard from many of you who are experiencing the same. But now service seems to be evening out a bit, and that's a good thing. It's virtually impossible to run a mobile internet company with truly unlimited speeds. General Motors has announced the new 2024 Chevy and GMC heavy-duty trucks that will come out in the spring. That's right, Ford will be putting out 2023 trucks in January, and GM will be putting out 2024 trucks in the spring. Make it make sense. There are up to 14 available camera views for safer towing, which should be super helpful when you're hitching up, backing up, or just trying to navigate the road. There's some other smart trailering tech features like adaptive cruise control that you can use while you're towing, along with extended blind spot monitoring. The 6.6 liter V8 gas engine is unchanged, but it's been equipped now with a standard Allison 10 speed automatic transmission. GM's HD gassers will have an increased gross combined weight rating from 24,000 to 26,000 pounds. The optional Duramax diesel 6.6 liter V8 continues with the same Allison 10 speed automatic, but its output gets a significant uptick. It now makes 470 horsepower up from 445 and 975 pound feet of torque up from 910. Max tow ratings, however, remain the same. More to come in a moment, including updates on RV pricing, a dangerous recall on RV stovetops, and a big opportunity for the traveling beer lover out there. But first, this episode is sponsored by RoadPass Pro. RoadPass is your gateway to all sorts of RV apps that help you travel with confidence. For $49.99 a year, you get premium access to Campendium, including cell signal maps, premium access to Togo RV, including live GPS that takes into account the size of your RV. You get 15,000 overnight RV parking location listings and a made for RVer social network at our village. Discover all the great features at roadpass.com slash pro and get $10 off with the code RVMILES10X. We've been sharing with you the news that RV prices have been coming down a bit over the last several months while RV manufacturers have been reducing output. In September, total RV shipments ended the month down 48.5% over September of 2021. Though through September, RV shipments are only down 8.2% on the year. Most of that reduction is in towable RVs, as motorhome inventories are starting to normalize. Motorhomes are only about 10% of the industry, and shipments were actually up for motorhomes 21% over last September. The result is that RV dealer lots are starting to look normal again. People are definitely still buying them, though, and if you see RV lots that are full of RVs, that is not a bad sign for the industry. That is how this industry has operated forever. People buy by shopping on the lot. And if the dealers don't have something on the lot for them to look at, they're not buying. But sales are definitely down and deals are there to be had. Though prices seem to be going up again already? I don't understand. Black Book, which is an auction lane watcher, says that dealers are still willing to pay a premium on used units. The average sales price for motorhomes and towables sold at wholesale auctions rose last month. The average selling price for motorized units was up $5,000 between August and September. Towable RVs were only up about 700 bucks. Several RV brands, including Jayco, Highland Ridge, Thor Motor Coach, and Starcraft are recalling 2021 and 2022 units because the flame on the stove may invert, which can light the igniter wiring on fire. It seems to happen when the furnace is running or when there are other changes in the airflow, like having your outdoor kitchen open. The fix is sealing off air gaps surrounding and underneath the cooktop. We had this exact thing happen to us and it turned out to be our outdoor kitchen being open when it happened. I think you can expect more brands to be added to this recall soon. So if your flame is doing some weird things, make sure to get it checked out. Thetford, the parent company of Norcold, who makes refrigerators for RVs, has decided to close down its two Ohio plants and move manufacturing overseas. The company says it's a move to help weather the current downturn in the RV industry 
and to deal with labor shortages. Finally, are you the ale blazer that Harvest Host is looking for? The company is looking for someone to drink beer and camp out in a decked out RV while checking out some of the coolest microbrews across the country. Harvest Host recently exceeded 500 hosts within its growing brewery and distillery category, joining a network of over 7,000 Harvest Host locations across North America. As part of the position, Harvest Hosts will pay one dedicated RVer to travel across the country visiting all 500 brewery and distillery hosts and sharing their experience while plotting the ultimate beer lover's road trip. Harvest Hosts will provide the RV or an expense stipend for anyone with their own already, comp beverages, $50 a day for expenses, and a lifetime Harvest Host membership. No drinking and driving though, have a beer and stay the night. There's a link to apply in the description. That's it for this week's RV and camping news. Leave a comment with your thoughts on any of this week's stories. Hit that like button if you didn't notice that I accidentally shaved off too much of one of my eyebrows. And subscribe to get these in your feed each week. And we'll see you next time.